I'm Keith Pierce. Welcome to Save Our Towns, a series designed to guide and inspire those who are working hard in Appalachia to build strong communities. In this second episode of Season 2, we look at the impact of a Walmart. Our quick tip comes from the USDA Rural Development Program. Plus, we identify two other experts who may be able to help you. As always, we close with three questions for a mayor. First, this month's example of awesome story, again reported by Virginia Tech student Hannah Samlaw, takes us to the two blue fields, one in Virginia and one in West Virginia. When a big commercial retailer came to the region, one town said no, the other said yes. Bluefield, Virginia prides itself on being Virginia's tallest town in terms of elevation. Both it and the neighboring town of Bluefield, West Virginia, were proud places in the days when railroads transported fine grade coal mined in nearby Pocahontas, Virginia. But that was mid-century America, and now both towns suffer from coal's decline. Bluefield, West Virginia, once was the richer of the two cities, famed for its skyline that rivaled New York City's. But in recent years, Bluefield, Virginia got the jump on its sister city. Approximately 15 years ago, Walmart Corporation uh, reached out to Bluefield, Virginia and wanted to locate here. Walmart got a resounding no from the other Bluefield in the 1980s. Bluefield, West Virginia had the opportunity to attract a Walmart, but at the time, the leadership in the city couldn't muster the votes on the city board to pass the planned unit development that would have allowed it. Letting Walmart in turned out to be a savvy business decision. The Virginia Bluefield now collects tax revenues of $300,000 annually from not only Walmart, but also the nearby Sam's Club, according to town officials. I'm here on College Avenue, one of the boundaries between the two Bluefields. Walmart may have hurt some of the local mom and pops, but at the same time, it gave a big boost to the Virginia side of town, which is the sole beneficiary of the big box sales. So what is Bluefield, Virginia doing with all those tax revenues? We uh, have used those funds in order to support our local community, uh, helped with recreational sports, been able to do more with our communities, have more events. The town also hired Bluefield native B.J. Roberts, experienced in sales and marketing, to write grants and promote the town's tourism and retail efforts. Our strategy is to build on the success that we've had with Sam's Club and Walmart, to use that success story to um, encourage other large retail industries to come into the area. Many small towns fight to keep Walmart out, saying it destroys community character. But some studies show home prices rise thousands of dollars in towns with a Walmart. In Bluefield, Virginia, the Walmart is a retail centerpiece that officials hope will keep the town bustling in the future. As you know, we're now following the town of Parisburg and Mayor Robert Dickerson for a year. One of the areas he's working on is reducing the number of vacancies downtown. I returned to Parisburg recently to take a look. When trying to revitalize Main Street, many mayors in southwest Virginia grapple with the same issue, how to fill those vacant buildings with businesses that will attract more business to downtown. Parisburg Mayor Robert Dickerson believes that success breeds success and that getting the right business to move in will create a domino effect where, uh, you know, you see one thing happening, so you want other things to happen, and, and, it, and it just rolls, just keeps rolling. Just two years ago, Parisburg was featured in the film Wish You Well, which depicted a bustling downtown, albeit from a 1940s vantage point. Still, Dickerson has a vision for bringing the town back to its vibrant past. Parsburg is growing, and we, we are we're doing great. The town has been um, uh, renovated, and uh, it's close to the way it used to be. The first National Bank of Parisburg, built in 1906, became a regional destination known as the heart of downtown Parisburg when it operated as a restaurant for nearly a decade. The upscale establishment served its final meal last September when the owners retired. Though it's been empty since, there's been a new development even since our last visit. One of the goals was to uh, get these vacant buildings filled. And since then, uh, the bank building has been sold, it's been renovated. Dickerson believes the town has what it takes to attract new business and achieve their goals of filling the empty buildings but he says it's an all-hands-on mission that everyone must embrace. It's something that everyone has to take part in. We'll be checking on the Parisburg vacancy rate throughout the coming year. Now for our expert tip. You may remember from last season that the USDA Rural Development Program can be a great source for you to finance projects. 
the new state director, Basil Gooden, explains why the program is trying to help small towns. What we try to do is develop an environment whereby people can work where they live instead of live where they work because right now people have to go to where their jobs are. And so what we try to do is to um, create an environment where they could actually you know, work, find employment, find something that's um, contributing to the economy um, and people having a happy um, life where they are. You can read a transcript of the complete interview where you can learn which items the USDA will finance at the Save Our Towns website. Click on the Connect with Experts tab. Next, here are two people who also may be able to help you. Diane Zahm is a professor of urban affairs and planning who introduces her graduate students to real world experiences by allowing them to volunteer in small towns. The students handle crucial planning tasks such as environmental analysis and mapping, door to door surveys, and setting up community visioning meetings. Kelly Scott, an agricultural and natural resources agent for Virginia Cooperative Extension, works to improve access to fruits and vegetables in the Appalachian region through community-based projects. One project, New River Health District Pharmacy Garden, involves local doctors who prescribe fruits and vegetables from the community garden to their patients. Scott, based in Montgomery County, can help you build partnerships to strengthen your community's well-being. For more information, go to the Save Our Towns website. You'll find ZOM under the VT Projects tab and Scott under the Extension tab. Wrapping up our second episode of Season 2 is three questions for Mayor Don Harris of Bluefield, Virginia. My name is Don Harris and I'm the mayor of the town of Bluefield, Virginia. Hub, H-U-B, Hub. We are the center of commerce for this region. We, we have, for example, we have uh, a large shop, two, two shopping centers within a quarter of a mile where we're standing right now that attracts numerous, numerous people every week and every day. So we attract the people. We bring them in, we have the highways, we have the sideways to, to take care of all the traffic. So I think that as far as development for the community, we offer it here in Bluefield, Virginia. We look after our residents, we take care of our different organizations. We're a proud, very proud community, always contributing back, not only taking, but we also contribute back so much to our own community. For more resources and contact information for the experts we interview, go to the Save Our Towns website. You can also share your stories there, and please send your thoughts to saveourtowns at vt.edu. This is Episode 2 of Season 2. Be sure to join us next time. Thanks for watching.